Bokitov, Khabarim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and the Houthi rebels uh, in Yemen have targeted a, uh, this happens to be a Saudi Navy. It is the Al Medina class frigate right here, a warship there off of the coast of Yemen. Uh, and this, this ship is targeted. Uh, I actually picked this up originally from our good friend Lorenzo on Already Happened. It's uh, not being reported by mainstream media. As you can see, a direct hit on this ship. What a major embarrassment for the Saudi military to have one of its own frigates struck by the Houthi rebels. Uh, these guys here, as we know, already uh, targeted two U.S. warships off the coast as well. I'm wondering whether or not President Trump is actually going to get involved in this war at this point now as a result of the uh, Houthis being struck, uh, excuse me, as the Saudis are being struck by the Houthi rebels uh, off of the coast there. An amazing strike there. According to uh, Front, um, this is from South Front News there, it says that the fighters of the Houth, uh, Houthi Salah Alliance have targeted and allegedly destroyed the Al Medina class missile frigate belonging to the Royal Saudi Navy off the coast of Yemeni western province of uh, uh, Huriyada. According to the pro Houthi Al Masriya television network, anti Saudi forces targeted a warship with a guided missile in waters near the port city of Hudiada, 150 kilometers southwest of the capital of Sana'a. 176 soldiers and officers and combat helicopter were on board at the moment of the attack, the television network said in a report citing an anonymous military source. Pro Houthi rebel sources added that the warship was destroyed. However, this still has not been confirmed. We have no idea whether or not the ship actually sunk or not. Uh, we don't see any video footage of that. My guess is that it probably did not sink, but nonetheless, a large loss of life could have de definitely happened as a result of such a major a missile striking this ship here. We'll have to wait and see how other things uh, come out on this. Uh, Mikel right here on his uh, Twitter page here is sharing this morning uh, Donetsk grads firing early, uh, early in the morning on the uh, 31st here of January, which by the way, it is January 31st, 2017, Ukraine, as he calls it here, the forgotten war. I'd like for you to see this as it's going on here. This is what's going on daily uh, in Ukraine and Eastern Ukraine on the Donetsk fronts there. And uh, of course, Mikhail D, you can look him up on Facebook here at uh, Erie uh, underscore QC. Incredible uh, information he's able to bring out on the events that are happening in Donetsk. We keep up with Mikhail a lot to find out what happens all along the front lines of Ukraine there because he's one of the best sources. He's an independent citizen journalist. Research and analysis of worldwide events there uh, is what's written on his page there. So I have to really thank Miguel for, for the heads up. Many times he has good information on what's happening there uh, inside of Ukraine. Also, another just a quick little uh, news tidbit here. Uh, President Donald Trump is uh, practicing what he did in the uh, TV series that he did. You're fired. Uh, Trump fires acting attorney general for refusal to enforce extreme vetting order. Uh, and uh, that is right here. You can see this is uh, Miss uh, Sally Yates uh, is replaced with Dana uh, Bonet, um, is the new uh, acting attorney general there. But uh, President Donald Trump has fired this acting attorney general, Sally Yates, making Dana Bonet the U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of Virginia, the new acting attorney general. Yates was relieved of her post Monday, just hours after news broke that she was instructing Department of Justice lawyers not to defend, defend the executive order. And uh, I would say one thing there. I know that the media has really portrayed a lot of uh, the, this, that, uh, the, the, the executive order on not allowing the nationals coming from these seven different countries. Uh, one thing I'd like to clarify, and I, I picked this up on RT, some of you have been making comments about this as well. There was only 109 people that were actually detained, not allowed to enter into the United States from over three 
I think it was over 3,000 that were coming in. So it's not as big of a deal as what some are making it out to be. RT also noted this. I know that RT is not supporting the idea per se of stopping people from coming in, but they also have noted that the seven countries that were being banned was not President Trump's initial executive order. His order was dealing with Syrian refugees. It was actually an order that had been signed by President Barack Hussein Obama, and that had been signed last year, in fact, about these people coming in from these countries. We just never did see this uh, before, and so therefore the uh, details were sketchy for us in the beginning, uh, but it's uh, Something that uh, President Trump, though, he is actually using the order that President Barack Obama signed when he was still in office there, and they were just screening these people that are trying to come in. Uh, again, as far as the refugees, I know that Russia has also spoken up uh, on the safe zones inside of Syria. They agree with it. They think it's a good idea for, for doing this. It is a good idea, especially if you can get the uh, places built, but according to Foreign Minister Lavrov, he said it is a good idea, but nonetheless, it would have to be approved by the current administration, that would be President Bashar al-Assad, uh, to, to allow the U.S. to help create those safe zones. And I have a feeling that we're going to see more and more that President Trump will work with the Syrian President uh, Bashar al-Assad in doing that, contrary to what a lot of others are, are considering there. And I'd like to add as well, something that we're kind of watching on this, we're seeing a major upset, a major shakeup that is going on, something I'm going to be digging deeper into. Yana is also digging in the background with me to help me put this together, and that is we are watching a war of sorts that is happening among the elite classes uh, since President Donald Trump has taken office. And that war is also with is seemingly coming right out of the Vatican itself. Not that uh, Donald Trump is against the Catholic Church or the, or the Catholic bishops, etc. He's very close friends, very close ties inside of the Catholic Church, but we see what Pope Francis has done recently with a major shakeup in the Knights of Malta. He has also ordered that all uh, Freemasons be expelled from the Catholic Church. It's a major shakeup going on, and it seems like there is a struggle with inside of the Vatican itself. I am watching this carefully uh, because uh, with the way things are going right now and the way the Pope has been trying to very, very cunningly bring about the New World Order with a One World Religion, uh, it does seem that there is trouble inside the Vatican. And I can imagine in the not so distant future, we may end up seeing another Pope take, play, take the place of that of uh, Pope Francis. Have to wait and see, not prophesying this. I just have a feeling that the way things are going, if some of the elites of the world get their way, they will actually change that Pope and bring one that is probably more in line with the ideology of that of uh, President Donald Trump. Now that may seem a far-fetched thing to say, but watch what's happening, watch closely. As we see that of uh, England with Theresa May following in the footsteps of President Trump, we're watching that, we're seeing the, the alliance closely with Israel. You can guarantee one thing, the Vatican has always wanted the third temple built, and I think that Trump will probably be one of those kind of guys as well. And it's something that even Pope Francis was working on trying to get done. But the thing is, is they're wanting to do that with the pontiff that they would like to have in office. Now that's just a speculation on my part, throwing that in there uh, for you. One other bit of news I wanted to really bring out, and this may not seem to matter to a lot of people, but it really does touch my heart. It's a, it's a, it's a major concern to me. BBC has released a report here. Um, and it is about the theft uh, of uh, little baby chimpanzees, the secret trade in baby chimps. Uh, it's done by David uh, Shukam, Shukman and Sam uh, Paranti uh, that came out yesterday. I'm gonna put this in the links below for you guys, but this is a major trade market that is going on, a secret network of wildlife traffickers selling baby chimpanzees. They're being ripped from their mothers, taken away, uh, and then sold on the black market. They're placed in little crates and stuff, shipped around the world. People are buying them for pets and stuff. And this is the type of crates that they're stuck in and you know, transported off. You know, I mean, I, the chimpanzee is so close to that of a human being. 
Uh, as far as features and looks and things like that, I don't believe in evolution, by the way, but I'm just, you know, trying to give you an analogy there. You know, other than the mental capacity, but it, they still, they have feelings, you know, they're, 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 you know even, even chickens have feelings. A lot of people don't realize that, but studies have shown chickens, cows, you know, cows weep before going to the slaughter, etc. But these little guys are just put in there and then they're sold off, you know, and you cannot help but think, you know, they had families as well, and they loved their mothers. It's not that they just go be with another chimp and think everything's all, all wonderful and good, but they're putting these little boxes here, throw a bunch of lemons in there and ship them off somewhere else in the world on super long flights and stuff, and probably spend a couple of days inside of these boxes. It's a shame. It's a crying shame. It's really a shame. But you know, I, I made a comment about this article here myself, and I said, you know, what's even a greater shame too is that yes, the BBC brings this out, but what about the different governments around the world, the United States, Britain, European governments as well, that use these chimpanzees and raise them in there for test lab animals as well to see how they react to different uh, medicines and things of this nature. That's a crime as well. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.